now that we have created the basic uh, the basic shell for the 10 copyright commandments webinar let's see what else we can do and what else we should do to, uh, to to build it out now again everything that we've already done is fully customizable and we can go and we can edit but there are some session settings here and there's a lot of stuff that is on here that is default that we want to work with so let's take go through them one at a time um, and see what changes we might make and why um, the audio settings again are uh, we talked about that being the VoIP or and or the long distance my recommendation is leave this as is um, or for both but if you're uncomfortable or if you are working with a clientele that's very uncomfortable about VoIP or that really doesn't know how to use it and you are going to getting be hearing more people you know kvetching and complaining that they can't hear you then you probably are better off you know disabling that and just staying with long distance uh, you know with the, with the, with the comp with the telephone number okay if you make any changes to anything uh, whether you're making changes here or anywhere you always have an option to notify all of the part affected participants of the changes so if you've had people who have already signed into your platform and they've already received a note from go to webinar saying that uh, they can log in and listen to you you know using VoIP and telephone uh, method method and you change that uh, then what you want to do is definitely send them another note back and notify everybody who who has already registered that there has been a change okay so that's that's number one number two we're going back um, is going to be panelists so you can always add panelists later you don't have to add the panelists at the time that you create the webinar you can do this later on so you may decide you want to have a webinar on a given day and then you know collect some panelists later you know don't add their names before you've had a chance to speak with them but you may have people attend after you have uh, done that already so what 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 happens here is again I really suggest you contact them first and ask them uh, make sure the date is okay you know and then and then of course you'll be having some discussions about about their input and and that's going to be covered in the in the checklist uh, but in the meantime what the, what happens is you'll be putting their name here and their email address and then they will appear actually on the program um, and on the holding page in the waiting area as panelists so uh, you know you can also also you know resend the invitation emails um if you have panelists who are who are registered you may want to do that you may al always want to uh, remind people about a webinar um, let's see branding and theme again this is all you know this is all stuff that you can change you can you know change the logo you can change the pictures uh, presenters uh, appear in the room here uh, you can add you know of course you want your if you're the presenter you want to have your name you can add other presenters you can have presenter images and you can have up to six in that room at any point in time Again, always remember to preview um, and uh, and spend some time with the preview. Uh, you know, making sure you've got everything done right. You can also have a, a welcome message. What I usually have is my welcome message is something that says, you know, make yourself comfortable. I'll be with you shortly. Typically, I log into my webinars about 30 minutes before just to make sure everything is okay. Um, sometimes people arrive 15 minutes or so prior to the uh, the appointed hour. Um, people who have known me and attended my webinars for years, uh, and there were many of those uh, many of those folks know that that is my uh, that's my mo. And uh, you know, very very often people will arrive early, so we have a chance to, to chat a little bit and catch up. Um, so you know, again, for future reference, if you're attending live webinars, you know, I, I like to get there about 15 minutes ahead. You know, it's also it's a good idea to do that. Um, it's a good idea to let people know they can come early. It's a, it gives you a chance to interact. It gives you a chance to engage. It gives you a chance to speak with people. Um, it gets you. Uh, it gives you a chance to check your audio uh, to to make sure that people can hear you. Uh, it gives you a chance to hear, you know, what their background noise is like. If you have a small group, and uh, 
you know, and you can keep it interactive and you don't have to mute everybody. That's kind of cool because then you have a very, very interactive presentation. People can engage and it becomes very, very personal. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's really, really great. I, I, I think that's great. And, and again, you know, 15 minutes before gives you a lot of opportunity to catch up and, uh, and get to know people personally. Okay, we did that. We're, we're, um, email notifications. Okay, so let's go to email notifications now. And this is very neat. This is one of the neat things about inst about um, GoToWebinar. Now, I'm going to say I could mention a couple of things about email because again, this is coming from their platform, and and they have emails that are built in that that are done for you. Uh, you've probably seen them a million times. You know, you sign up for a webinar and you, the first thing you get is a web, uh, you know, an email saying, you know, thanks for registering. And when the webinar is over, you get a webinar. We're going to talk about that because those are all generated by the system. Uh, they're all, uh, you know, they're all different. Uh, there is some default text and you can, uh, you can let the system, you know, use the default text or you can personalize it. And I, I highly recommend that you personalize it. Um, you know, the other question becomes, you know, do you want to use their emails or do you want to use your own from your own autoresponder? And again, that's a matter of choice. I like to use both. I'll be honest with you. I really, really like to use both. I like to use a combination. Um, I let, the, I let the go to webinar, uh, platform send stuff out. I make sure that it's personalized. Um, and then because I'm using a webinar bridge, uh, that you, that you can see about in another one of the videos here, uh, at the same time that people are registering for a webinar, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting them into a campaign. Now, if they're already in a, a campaign and if a subscriber is already on my mailing list and they register for a, uh, you know, for, for a webinar, you know, that, that's not, that's not necessary, you know, unless, unless I'm doing another kind of campaign on another subject and the messaging is all very, very different. It's not necessary to do that all the time. Um, when I created this, webinar and I put the webinar in the platform. Let me go over here for a second here over to blog mother Fran. When I created the event at blog mother Fran, um, and also at, uh, at HUD homes fever on, on the other site, I just put the, uh, the, the, the registration link right here. And that's all that was necessary. So that there was no bridge attached to that. That type of registration does not put you onto another mailing list or anything. Um, and, uh, and, and, you, and again, you created the link, you, they asks for your name and email address, and that becomes your prime, you know, your private link to the event. Um, each participant in the event has a unique link. Um, everybody is logged in separately. You can't share the link with other people, uh, because it's your link. People have to register independently. You can share it and, and depending upon how you set it up with the platform, uh, a number of things can happen. Uh, if I have a webinar and I have, you know, Davy Jones appearing as a registrant and Davy Jones appears as a, as a registrant 20 or 30 times, um, that tells me that somebody was sharing a link. Um, that is, might be okay sometimes and it might be okay on a on a free webinar i mean on a free webinar i don't know why people wouldn't want to have their own anyway because they will get uh you know they'll get notifications and follow-ups and so forth and so on um, but if i'm doing a paid webinar or if i'm doing a webinar that's part of a program where people are paying a premium and i see 20 uh attendees with the same name using the same link i'm going to delete them you know, most of the time, um, because it's, that's just not a cool thing to do. And, and, uh, and I don't see that happen a lot. I see it happen occasionally, uh, but, but, and, but happily not, not too much, uh, but that's something that, you know, for you to think about, um, every time somebody registers on a go to webinar link, uh, they are creating a ticket to the event for themselves in their name and for their email address. And all of these emails that are generated from the system are going to go to the email address that actually registered for the event. So let's take a look at these and let's see what your choices are and, and how to proceed What the best way to go. So we have email. You have a choice of, of sending it in HTML or in plain text. Um, the HTML, I, you know, it seems to have very, very good delivery rates as far as I can tell. I just leave it at that. Um, this says, uh, it gives you a chance to, uh, to preview the webinar invitation. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so when the invitation goes out, when they, uh, you know, 
This is, this is the invitation to register for the, the webinar. Uh, so when I want to invite people, and if I want to invite them from the platform, they get this and they have to actually click on the link or uh, you know on the button here or on the link to actually register. So there's an invitation to register and that's not, not something I mess with a whole lot, okay? Uh, you can also have it email you the invitation. You can personalize the emails and here we go. And so here we have a... Um, uh, an email, the subject line is a confirmation with the webinar address. You see that? Okay, that's what that is. It, it allows 297, oh, I have 297 more allowed, so a 384 max. So you can see that is a pretty big subject line already, and, and I, don't, I don't really see any reason to make it any longer than that. Um, here's how it will read, dear first name, you know, whatever first name they use on the registration. Thank you for registering. It puts, it uh, inserts the webinar link. It says, you know, please do not share this with others. It, the link is, is unique to you. You will be connected using the computer's microphone and speakers. A headset is recommended. Um, and uh, there we go. So. Because I registered here with this with this email address, uh, it, that remains there. I can add other text here. I can change the email address. Um, I may want to direct questions back to uh, you know to Webinar Fever. Actually, I may want to create a separate email address that collects uh, email germane to to this project. And so that might be you know that might be something I would consider doing. And, and I do that on occasion. Um, I can add this to the calendar. Your people who receive this uh, this email will be able to add the event to their calendar, and then of course you can um, you can review, preview, and see what that looks like. Now, you also have the ability to choose additional. additional email and, and, and tell the system exactly when to say it. So here are the default, uh, the default times to, to, uh, to send out um, emails to people you are inviting and also to registrants. So uh, what they recommend is one week before, one day, and one hour before. And, and I think that that's, a, that's fair enough. Um, I take it one step further again with my own autoresponder. And I will also, with my own autoresponder, send an additional one the day before, one an hour before, and I will also send one out about five minutes before. Um, in addition, I may want to add a, an SMS text message so that on that person's phone, they get a message saying, you know what, the webinar is about to start, check your email, log in, you know, we're starting in a couple of minutes. Um, I may want to uh, might want to do that. Uh, of course, you can only do that if you have their their text uh, and, and their cell phone, and and you have permission to do that. So if you have, in the course of your communication um, with your with your registrants, if you ha you know been able to secure that information, you can use that very effectively. The other way to that that is really really excellent and that works wonderfully to um, to increase attendance is a voicemail message and by delivering a voicemail message to your re registrants uh, phones uh, just before the event is going to start um, the other thing that you can do with your autoresponder system is is something else because um, with the autoresponder system over at uh, Instant Customer, let me give you an example. Um, when you're doing an event over there, and, and this is a, a little bit more germane to um, to Evergreen webinars right now for, for when they sign up for the Evergreen, and, and they're working on a, an, on a live webcast platform right now, you can actually design that system in such a way that if you have, let's say you have 100 people who have registered for your, for your event and 50 of them show up, well, you can actually have that set up so that if you have a bank of registrants who have not, you know, clicked the link and actually attended, that that the system you can prompt the system and say, okay, you know, if, if anybody hasn't attended five minutes after it starts, you know, send that group, segment that group, and send them a notice and tell it, tell them we're live. You know, come on, don't miss it. 
And that is something else that has proven to really increase attendance a lot at webinars. And, uh, and that, again, is using your own cross-channel marketing in conjunction with GoToWebinar in a way to make it more powerful than ever. So uh, let's see, what do they say here? Yes, it, says, it suggests that you send the reminder at least twice. I agree wholeheartedly. You can also... Um, you know, change this, you can, uh, you know, you can, you can change that even more. Uh, you can preview that email. That's a, that's a reminder. It's a reminder of the date and the time. And, uh, and then afterward, when the, when the event is over, um, you can send follow-up email. And, uh, and again, this is something you can send. A lot of people send it out the next day. And some, be, some people send it out the next hour. Some people wait even longer than that. The, the, the default is one day. Um, I think uh, if, they, if they did attend, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if, if it's a day or an hour. What I do think is important is that you actually personalize it. Because what they say here is, thank you for attending our webinar. We hope you enjoyed our event, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but you can add some stuff. You may be offering something in your webinar. You may be offering a special report. You may be offering access to a video. You may be offering a special list of, you know, the list of all the foreclosures in the area. You may be offering a list of, of uh, staging tips. You may be offering something really, really cool. And if you're offering something and you're promising to deliver that after the webinar, then you might want to, to make this an hour after and make sure that you type this, you know, write, write this in. Here is your list, you know, list of, uh, here we'll say list of bank properties. Bank properties. Boy, I'm, I'm a terrible typist, I'll tell you. As promised. Okay, and then what you do is you'll actually insert the link here. Uh, you know, you may have that, I don't, you know, where, I don't know where you have that stuff, your domain.com, bank list, PDF, whatever. Um, whatever it is you have, uh, you can put the link in and put that link right in the follow-up email that goes out from GoToWebinar. And that's a really, really, really uh, neat thing to do. Um, you know, and do that in advance. So plan that in advance. You know, as we talked about, you know, we, you know, you're going to plan what your handouts are, plan what your bonuses are, plan what you're sharing. The other thing you may want to do, and which is a really great idea, is to give them a link to your website. You know, maybe a link to register for something else. Uh, maybe, maybe you're doing an open house. Whatever. You know, I mean, you 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 have an opportunity here to um to reach these people who you had talked to all right now what about the people you did not who did not attend what about the people who never showed up well you don't want to send them the same thing because here you do we say thank you yeah we're saying thank you for attending the webinar so you're not going to say thank you for attending the webinar if they didn't attend um let's see what what go to webinar says in their personalization they say sorry you were not able to attend our webinar Please send your questions, comments, and feedback too, you know, and, uh, and, and that's where they leave it. So that's, that, that's where you can really, really capitalize when you record your webinar, when you offer, and you may want to say, uh, you know, don't fret. You know, I recorded the webinar. Okay, you can see it, you know, give the link, uh, you know, where people can find it. You know, one of the things that you definitely want to do here with that kind of message is, uh, you know, is, is introduce some level of scarcity. You know, um, if they know that it's there and they can see it anytime they want, then there's a real good possibility that they'll never go back. If you tell them it's only going to be posted for a week or only going to be posted for 48 or 72 hours, you know, that's something else. And, um, and that increases, you know, the a whole measure of urgency. And if it's something that is really, really interesting to them, they're going to make a point of going and seeing it and um, and, and watching the replay. Um, if it's not interesting to them and, it, it, you know, and they're really not interested, that's fine. Then, you know, then maybe, you know, that it's not really, really good targeted traffic. And maybe that's really not a, you know, a really, really good prospect for whatever 
whatever niche it is you're you're working on. So you know, don't worry about that. But definitely, assign a time limit and uh, and follow up. Um, again, in the meantime, make sure you have everybody captured on a list that you own, uh, because because this is a go to webinar list and this is not a list where a uh, um, you know, a, an email company, an email autoresponder company, uh, you know, with a whole lot of integrity is going to let you just upload these contacts and start, you know, start sending them stuff. Um, if you have an email company that lets you do that, I'll be honest with you, I think that is something that, that, that that's a red flag about the service you're using uh, because the stuff that, you know, the, the people that I'm using just, I mean, that just is not allowed. When When people take advantage of a system like that, when they abuse a system like that, uh, they, they, they create spam and when you have a system that is responsible for creating a lot of spam then that system starts to suffer terrible terrible uh, issues with deliverability and reliability of service and if you are you know housing you know lots of people in a list on that you know your own deliverability and your own uh, email is going to suffer so you want to be with a you know you want to house your list and you want to see it residing on a place where where, where, where the uh, the managers and the people who operate that system are, uh, you know, have the integrity not to do that. Uh, let's go back to our webinar here for a second. See what else we have to uh, to work with. We just did the email settings, um, polls. Okay, so we can. Cr for some reason, my poll disappeared. I probably didn't save it. Um, you can create polls that you can. Um, uh, conduct inside the course of your live webinar. There's single answer poll, multiple answer polls, you know, and again, this is very, very simple. Um, you know, how many web, you know, how many houses did you sell last year? Okay. This is going to be a single answer question. Uh, and we can say none. We can say one to five we can say six to ten we can say eleven to um 20 and we i mean you know i mean obviously people are going to be doing much higher numbers than that um and then we can create the uh the question uh and then we can create an, uh, you know, several polls. And, uh, you know, if you're going to have an, a webinar that's about an hour long, you might want to have two or three polls and then, uh, you know, space them out at about 20 minute intervals. What, what, you, what you're doing at that, at that point in time is you are, you know, just engaging them, you know, making them click on something, making them think about something, you know, connecting your webinar, your material to them, um, showing them how they compare uh, with other people who are on the webinar, you know, re regardless of what the question is, and that's a very, very good engagement tool. And uh, GoToWebinar does a great, deal, great, uh, great thing with that. In the meantime, anytime somebody answers a poll on your webinar, that answer, the answer to the poll, the answer to the surveys, or well, everything that they that they that they do in terms of engagement, appears on an Excel spreadsheet. And when when the event is over. You can download that spreadsheet and you will have access to that information. Um, you, same thing with the survey. Again, the survey is something that happens on the registration form. We talked about that already. And, um, and, and you can have different kinds of surveys. You can have multiple answers. You can have a scale of one to five, short phrases and essays. So you can ask people, you know, all kinds of questions. I answer surveys. Sometimes people are looking for, um, for information, I mean, what kind of surveys could you uh, could you do on your registration form? You may want to be talking to investors. You may, you know, ask people, you know, have they owned investment properties? You know, what is what are their what are their questions about um, about uh, real estate investment properties that they would like you to answer on the webinar? Uh, you might want to ask, you know, do you want me to contact you personally and give them an opportunity to respond to you in the survey form. Now, if you do that in the survey form, then what you really need to be going back because uh, all of that information is available in a CSV form. Let me show you that for a second here. In a CSV form on the um, 
on the webinar, on a, on a completed webinar. So I have, you know, on this, I don't have one on this practice session. Sorry about that. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm really, really reluctant to pick one up and, uh, and show you something for a live one I have because I don't want to uh, violate anybody's, pr any privacy issues. And I don't want to show names and I haven't gone through all of the, uh, um, you know, rigmarole of, you know, uploading a sheet and, you know, uh, you know, crossing out people's names so you can't see them. I just haven't done that. Um, but you can take my word for it because you can get reports. You go to the gener generate reports over here. You can get a registration report and attend, and that's for everybody who registered. You get an attendee report afterwards and a performance report that gives you details of the entire webinar from start to finish uh, and, and shows you how engaged people were and, and, and everything else. So, um, so that's what you can do. Um, Let's see, uh, one more thing, and, and you may want to require a webinar password. If you require a webinar password, um, you've got to think about that yourself, and you have to send it to people from outside of the system or they can't enter the webinar. So when you set up your webinar, you they will ask you what you want the password to be, and then you have to use your other autoresponder to actually tell them um, what that password is. Um, I've never used passwords. Uh, it could be something that you want to do um, and test a little bit and see if people uh, have a problem. I, I, I'm just, you know, always reluctant to make things any more complicated than they have to be. Um, it seems like even if you do things really, really simply, there, there, there is a, uh, a, you know, some measure of attendees who are going to have problems with technology, no matter how easy it is. Um, and, and, and that's one of the reasons I, I haven't done this. If you're working with a group and you have a group that's really, really good tech savvy group, that's, that's cool with all this stuff. And you have reasons to be using, um, passwords, then, you know, be my guest, you know, go for it, you know, and, 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 and come back and, and talk to us about it somewhere on, in one of our forums and let us know, you know, why you did that, how it worked out. And, um, and let's hear about that. Okay, so on to the next one.